Our words matter. We know that this is true. The words that we use to talk about or to our children matter. The words that we use to talk about people we love matter. And so when we discuss immigrants and refugees, the words we use matter. And they matter because as Christians, we believe that every individual we encounter is made in the image of God. And therefore, how we speak about others is important. Our language assigns meaning to people and places, and it indicates to those around us what's in our hearts. Scripture reminds us in Luke 6, 45, that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. We're also cautioned in James 3, 9, that our mouths can both praise God and curse those made in God's image. As we seek to be a Christian community pursuing Christ-like welcome for immigrants and refugees, it's important that we talk about the words we use. They are a signal to those around us, and they provide us the opportunity to communicate welcome with our words. First, let's talk about the word illegal. If someone has entered the United States without inspection, overstayed a visa, or violated the terms of their visa, they have most likely broken a U.S. law. While a person's mode of entry may be illegal, or their documentation may be out of status, that does not define their personhood. Actions can be illegal, but human beings made in the image of God are not. Therefore, words like undocumented or unauthorized allow regard for the humanity and worth of an individual while still acknowledging a lack of immigration status. It's also important to note that the word illegal is often synonymous with criminality. Crossing the border, which is referred to by the government as improper entry, can be a misdemeanor offense, similar to a speeding ticket, at least where I live here in Georgia. We don't identify anyone who has ever gotten a speeding ticket with criminal language. And overstaying a visa or being in the country without paperwork, which is called unlawful presence, is actually civil violations and are not crimes at all. This nuance is important, both as we honor the dignity of immigrants' personhood and as we work together to find real solutions. The second word we want to talk about is alien. Now, this is one we often hear in older translations of the Bible or even in a lot of our immigration-related laws and paperwork. According to the dictionary, one definition of alien is simply a person born in another country, a non-citizen. However, alien is also used to refer to extraterrestrials, which is the definition most familiar to most English speakers. So when we use the word alien, it can have the effect of creating artificial distance between those born here and those born in another country. It can also conjure up images of otherworldliness, which really deny humanity and separate us more than it brings us together. It can distract us from the reality that immigrants are human beings made in God's image and are of the same value and worth as any other human being. Descriptors like non-citizen or immigrant are more helpful if needing to distinguish where someone was born. All right, next up, we're gonna discuss a few terms that are often used interchangeably or in succession, but actually refer to different groups of people. We're talking about immigrant, migrant, refugee, asylum seeker, visa holders, and green card holders. An immigrant is someone who leaves his or her home country and moves to a foreign country with the intention of settling there. A migrant is more often referring to someone who is actively moving from place to place, whether within their home country or across borders, sometimes for economic reasons, such as seasonal work. A refugee is someone who has been forced to flee his or her own country because of war, violence, or persecution, often without any warning. A small share of refugees will ultimately be assigned to a third country, like the United States, where they will begin a new life. But most refugees stay, often years or even decades, in the first country where they fled. Sometimes they're in camp settings and rarely allowed to work or provide for themselves. An asylum seeker is similar in that it is someone who has fled his or her own country and professes a credible fear of persecution. However, their case has not yet been adjudicated by the government of the host country. In the United States, seeking asylum is a legal process, 
but one that must begin on U.S. soil. Asylum seekers cannot apply for asylum until they have reached the U.S. border or a port of entry. There are many types of visa holders. These individuals have obtained legal visas that allow them to be lawfully admitted to the U.S. for a temporary period. Visa types are all unique and have their own specific requirements and allowances, such as employment. Finally, who are green card holders? Getting a green card is a colloquial term for legal permanent resident. Why? Because in the past, the card they received was green. With few exceptions, such as active military service, becoming a legal permanent resident is a prerequ prerequisite to ever becoming eligible for naturalized citizenship. Though there are many legal permanent residents who choose never to apply for citizenship and remain legally in the country for decades. So what do we do if we make a mistake? What if we say the wrong thing? If we talk for any amount of time on any subject, we're bound to put our foot in our mouths, especially if the topic is new to us. Don't let the terminology become a barrier to having brave conversations. If you don't know what to say, ask a trusted friend or a safe community like Women of Welcome. And if you make a mistake, apologize, learn from it and move forward. That is how we grow. I hope this video helps us to communicate welcome with our words because our words matter. I'll close us with a blessing from Psalm 19. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord.